This tutorial is about making costumes for movie zoo characters using images and photos. It's easy to change the colours on movie zoo characters and it's fine if you want modern casual dress. If you want something special, say a historical costume, there are other ways you can do it. I made a movie about Lord Elgin, a 19th century aristocrat who stole the Elgin marbles. Obviously I didn't even have a photo of him to use, but being an aristocrat he had a portrait painted, so I used that. How do you get a flat 2D image like this onto your movie zoo character? Of course you use the UV character maps and make a decal which you can then plant on your character. This is Jill, she's going to be a character in a children's story I'm doing about a giant. In the night, Jill and her brother Jack come downstairs to find a giant asleep in the road outside their house. So we need them both in pyjamas. To do this we need an image editing program. I use Photoshop Elements which is like a cut down version of the classic Photoshop. Okay, I open up Photoshop Elements and I open up my image of the material that I want Jill's pyjamas to be made of and I open up the UV map for the girl. I need to create a few more layers because I don't want to draw actually on the UV map. Otherwise when I put that on the character, the character will come out covered in these lines. I want to make a new layer, put my decal on that and then that's what I can save so that the UV map is just a guide. I also put another layer on underneath in white so that the map shows up a bit more. In fact you make a sandwich and the layer you're actually working on where you put in your colour and your images is the one in the middle. Then afterwards we take away the top and the bottom one. Okay now I'm going to go back to my material, select all and copy it. And paste it. Okay, I can paste that rectangle all over the torso and the arms and over the legs. You notice that each time you paste something it makes a separate layer. That doesn't matter. That leaves you free to move each one around and then in the end you, you just merge them all together. OK, I can highlight all my layers, right click, merge layers. There will be a similar command on whatever program you use. Then I need to trim off the excess. You can use an eraser or better to use the straight line selection tool and then just delete. Now I can hide the top and bottom layers and then save what's left as a PNG file. This will be my decal and we'll call it Jill Pajamas. Now we better put the pajamas onto Jill and see if they look okay. So it's edit decals custom texture and then find the Jill Pajamas file. Oh, it looks like we've left some of the original clothes on, so we'll need to delete those. Sorry about that, Jill. We'll leave her slippers on because she does have to walk outside. And we'll give her a twirl. Yes, she looks all right. Because she's going to appear in different scenes, I'm going to save her as a favourite. Then I can just introduce her as and when I want her, and she'll come out all dressed up as I saved her. OK, Jill was fairly straightforward because we had just one texture, one image to plant on various parts of her body. Let's have a go at something slightly more complicated. For the same film, I need a bunch of people in medieval costume. Looking on the internet, there were a lot of pictures in medieval costume because 
that's what a lot of people do. They like to dress up and there's costumes for sale and people modelling them and everything. So that was good. The photos that I wanted were those where people were standing facing the camera. Full length shots facing the camera. Right, let's go with this guy. OK, let's open the photo and let's open the character net for the man. OK, same as before. I need to make three layers. Rename the character net so I don't get that confused. That goes on the top and then a white background so I can see what's going on. I'm going to put a selection rectangle around the top half of his body, down to his waist. Copy that, go over and plonk it. Plonk it in the middle of my sandwich. OK, it's come out rather small. That doesn't matter because we can just expand and contract the different layers as we want to. I'll speed the video up a little bit while I just do some shifting around and adjusting. OK, that's the chest part in place, but his arms are hanging down and on the UV map they're sticking out to the side. Let's copy this shirt sleeve and see if we can make it to fit along the arm on the UV map. You can use the corners of the image to stretch and resize and, and rotate it. And the great thing about using photos though, you see you still got that, all those folds and the texture and the, the look of the cloth. If you just got the flat colour to paint it, you haven't got that. Now I'm filling in areas that I've missed using the clone tool. All these programs have got a, a clone tool. Sometimes they call it a stamp where you copy one part and just paste exactly whatever that is somewhere else on the picture. That way you've got the colour and the folds and the texture just the same. Now we can go on to the other arm and I'll copy this first one and just turn it inside out and put it on the other side. Edit copy, edit paste. That goes on as a separate layer. So I can do what I want with that. And I'll just grab the middle of one side and pull it over and it reverses the image. Here we go. Thing you have to get used to when you're doing this is to click off each time. Either use the deselect command because otherwise you find you go over to the tools and you're dragging your image over with it. Now I haven't got a photograph of the back of his jerkin and I don't want it to look like the front either. So because it's the back, I'll just put a rectangle there and copy the colour off the front, that nice brown off the front of his jerkin and use the bucket to make a brown rectangle for the back. Now I am actually going to do some painting. Dip my pipette into the colour of his shirt on the front and then use a brush to fill in a nice wide shirt collar at the back. Again, I'll speed up a little bit to make it less tedious for you. I'll just rub out the piece where his neck is because, because if there's no image on it, his skin will show through. Right, last bit of cloning. Now we've got some tidying up to do. Remove that shirt that's gone all over his fingers. And that little part where it's touching his shoes. OK, now that was just the main part of the jacket. We've got the bit that hangs down below his waist. OK, on this one. I'm just going to concentrate on the part that you see, the front part of that jerkin. The two areas at the side, in fact, where it goes around, that's his backside. So I'll just colour them in the same as I did with the back. I'll just speed this up a little bit. You don't want to hang around while I'm trying different brush sizes and, and stuff like that. Okay, same as with Jill. Merge 
merge your image layers. Oh, we haven't given him any trousers. I'll just put a rectangle around there, pick up the color of trousers off the photo, drop it over the area where his trousers are. Okay, we should be there now. Turn off everything except the decal layer. Save it as a PNG file. Call him Mediman. Now let's see how he looks in the... Sorry, old chap, we're going to have to take your clothes off. Edit, decals, find the file. There you are. Looking good. We'll save you, we'll save you as a favourite too. And we'll do the same for the rest of the cast. Okay, time to start making the film. Thanks for watching. Movie Zoom.